introduce yourself? In Samoro or English? In Samoro? Yeah, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, I'll try Samoro. Sento ni Nwaito, Toto, Toto Mangilo, Samasago, Pagugi, Colorado. Kwaosi Aiden, Samasagatsuki, it's Washington State. Um, familia and uh, Peredo Tsu. Si Senora Lupe, Taitano Pengilin and so. Hello, my name is Patricia Ann Pokai Gwibuki. Hafade, my name is Madkita or Mickey Davis. Familia and Paleli uh, Tata Hoggett. Hi, my name is Edward Starrett. Uh, my wife is Mickey Davis, and we're here doing the immersion program together. Guahusi Jesse Luhan Bennett. Hafade, Guahusi Riley Tidingfong. Uh, Sumasa Gatsu Gitsa uh, San Diego, um, Familian uh, Manok San Dalalai. Guahisi Clarissa Mandela. My name is Lourdes, last name Calvo. Half a day in Anhu Vini Calvo Pro, uh, Familian Lambon Zandele. Buenas, Guahusi Olivia Diaz Anderson. Half a day, Guahusi uh, Alex Lo Tadon. I na anhu gi finot samoru. Guahu si June Pengalinen, sumasagazu gi za El Cerrito, California. My name is Hala Taitano Hamuda. I na anhu si lehua Taitano Hamuda. Ane hobino o tunga finot samoru gi gima lo ane muskuela ho tima sanganyo ma sanganyo na tisina ho sangan and commentos finot samoro pues pago utunga finot samoro lotiko smaliko mangi lotiko smaliko loke no ko to my tai e finot samoro my language journey with chamoro started during the pandemic um, i was raised in the states i'm like third generation immigrants to to the united states so uh, my grandparents didn't kind of stopped with them for a while they didn't teach my Mom, any Chamorro, the culture was pretty limited to like food. My relationship to Chamorro language right now is that I'm still in the kind of early uh, stages of my language journey. My mother and my aunt and my eldest cousin are quite fluent, and um, but I'm me and my brothers are not. We're children of the diaspora, and though my mom tried to do her best. Um, we would sing novenas, um, Fino Chamorro, but we weren't able, we just never learned how to speak fluently. Um, I speak no Chamorro right now. Just a couple of words from, from knowing the names of food from, you know, family gatherings. My relationship to the Chamorro language at the moment is really a journey. It's a, it's a growing journey for me. Um, I grew up in a household where we had Chamorro spoken by my grandma in our intergenerational household. Um, I heard it when we're in trouble. I heard it when we're being celebrated, um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so I haven't had a lot of exposure to Chamorro growing up. Um, the last fluent speakers in my family were my grandmother and my grandfather. I was born here and grew up here and only exposed a little to the language. I grew up at a time when you were not allowed to speak Chamorro in any public places, including school. Right now I would say I'm a beginner, like trying to move as much as I can towards becoming an intermediate speaker. My family has been trying to learn during COVID, um, but prior to that, we didn't really hear it much in the household, only when I would visit back here on the island and I'd hear some of the elders speaking. Uh, my relationship to the Chamorro language is my wife. That's me. <laughs> um, so I knew Fino Tsamoru as a young child but when my family moved stateside, my father didn't want us to speak Samoru. I grew up on Guam, and there really wasn't that much opportunity to learn the language. In elementary, they maybe only taught you like 
shapes, colors, animals, and then maybe they only offered like one class in middle school and then maybe one in high school, but it wasn't necessarily required. I've been learning the Chamorro language for a few years now from Senor Miguel Pavacua on Zoom. And I really want it. Malago Zu Gifino Tsamoro. I really want to know my language as a second language learner. That's why I'm here. My dream um, uh, for tomorrow is that I would actually dream in tomorrow. Malago no para uma fatinas e e quinta e fina tomorrow já já mamatai está nei já foi mago um tu sinha no mas sangue na fina tomorrow pois malago no ma revive e tomorrow já já tu que isso é roots. My goal and dream for tomorrow would be to have. Um, it more accessible for myself, where I don't have to dig so deep into the recesses of my brain to have it um, spoken in my house. For the language, my dream is that my children will reach some level of fluency in my lifetime. My dream uh, in learning tomorrow is first and foremost uh, to connect with my connect with my tatahu, and then my second goal is to raise my child, to, to, to have a child and raise them speaking tomorrow, knowing tomorrow, knowing the language and the ikotora, kind of my, my most present dream so that's, uh, is that my child would be able to say uh, to my dad, um, so for him to hear one of his grandchildren say I love you in tomorrow. This is my first time in Guahan. My grandparents moved from Guam to the mainland United States uh, when my grandfather enlisted in the military many years ago. So when my father um, was young, just about 10 years old, and ever since then, uh, many people in my family have not been back to the island. So a big part of being able to attend this immersion camp was reconnecting um, with Guahan in addition to getting exposure to the language I don't regularly get and, and building relationships and community um, that I've been able to kind of start building over Zoom with Maget's classes and things like that, but building them um, in space uh, with everybody here. My mom is here with me, which I didn't expect actually. Um, so having an opportunity to connect more with her and to learn her personal history and also, uh, it's the first time I've been on the island for about 10 years. So to visit the, grades, the graves of my grandparents and um, I would really love to do some weaving because my grandmother was a weaver. And then just to speak as much as I can and grow my vocabulary. Who desea animu zan matanya? I like courage and fearlessness. I often feel courage in my life. However, learning a second language at my age, I'm not as courageous nor fearless as I want to be. And so I want to take my learning to the next level. I want to level up and I hope to be more daring and more bold in my learning. There's something about just like being the first cohort that does this and like having a community. I think a lot of us are talking about, you know, familial or ancestral trauma and um, like kind of forming a new family with this like shared goal of learning tomorrow uh, as, as people in the diaspora. I'm looking most forward to my husband going through this program. It's been really incredible. Um, T. Chamorro, he's not Chamorro, he's uh, of um, Anglo descent, um, but he is immersing himself in this program and I'm just incredibly proud of him and also I just think it's important for your partners to be a part of that journey as well. Just really immersing myself in the culture as well as the language like we just 
We just did dancing downstairs and chanting, and that was really moving, especially since I have a soft spot for music, and it was really beautiful to hear that. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it, and it's kind of that way tomorrow, and even though it is around me in ways with my family, uh, because I don't live here in the Marianas, I feel like we have to work a little bit harder to make sure that um, we hear it, that we celebrate it, that we use it. Um, learning a heritage language, learning um, our ancestral language is really layered and really complex. It's not just about learning words and learning phrases. It's about peeling back layers of um, intergenerational trauma related to colonialism and feeling those traumas and feeling those losses. Um, and so that's a really big obstacle, I think. Um, I would say the biggest challenge for me is just is not having enough people to talk to. You know, we have our elders, like our grandparents, often like, you know, you'll speak, you'll be speaking tomorrow to them and maybe they'll speak it to you for like a moment and they switch to English automatically. You have to invest so much time to do it. You can't phone it in. There's no shortcut. And so I would say doing the work and creating the time to learn the language has definitely been the biggest challenge. Uh, ultimately, learning tomorrow for me is important because I want to be a good ancestor. Both my mom and dad were born and raised on Guam, and I've known little about my culture. Maget talks about the burden that second language learners have, and so I feel um, deeply obligated to learn and for my sake, for my family's sake, for my children, and to keep the language alive. Uh, learning tomorrow is important for me because it connects me more to my wife and to her family and to her um, traditions. Learning tomorrow is important for me on a number of levels and I have a multitude of reasons. One is because of course my, my family and I, I want to be closer to my grandma in that way. She's always, when I took tomorrow in the past, she was really excited about it and I think she found a, a kind of confidence in her own language skills once she heard me trying, even though there's a lot of laughing and giggling because of what I was saying and checking her on things that I've heard her say and I didn't realize like what it meant and a lot of denial over like, I never used that word or that phrase, no. Um, but it, a lot of it is tied to my grandma. You're learning more than just words, you're learning a way of being. It's important because the Chamorro language is mine. It's part of my identity. And for so many people, you, you have children and they get that. They get that because language is a core part of who you are. It's how you express yourself. And um, I want that. I want to be who I am. I want to have what, what so many others have is their language and communication. That learning Chamorro is important is that it's an act of resistance and an act of resilience because of our colonized past. Our language has been threatened with erasure. Our elders um, are fluent and it's really sad to see that just in like one generation we've lost so much. Learning tomorrow is about honoring who we are as a people and saying that we are still here and we are going to continue to be here. Why am I learning tomorrow? Why is it important? Why well, is it important? Oh, because you want to preserve the language. Because if you don't do this, then you'll, you'll finally disappear. You won't be you know, ex non-existent then. I'd say what inspired me most about the program is the opportunity to learn from our cultural masters. Uh, to learn from Frank Rabone and Mama Chai, to the weavers, to everyone who came in. Um, just the fact that we were able to, to learn uh, not only the language, but to learn our language in the context of learning our traditions and what our ancestors have done for thousands of years. A lot of things inspired me in this program. I think, first of all, the opportunity to create community with folks who I've been learning with for a couple of years just in a virtual setting. Um, some of them are my friends and some of them I've known in person for a while and some of them are, are new friends to me now. So the opportunity to 
um, be here together and experience the immersion together with people who are all sort of like-minded and we're all um, equally committed to our language learning journey has been really special. It seems corny to say, but everything. Just being able to take part in all of the experiences have really helped me see a lot of the richness of my culture and working on my language at the same time has been incredibly powerful. Tiafa loazi iha gaho manalalaho zaha impreso ho put esta programa. There's been so much while we've been here that has been inspiring, but um, maybe two of the most inspiring days that I've had is our trip to Fua Rock. So to get to have indigenous Samoro ceremony um, with the class and with other uh, Samoros who wanted to go and give our offerings and our thanks was, was really life-changing for me. And just in general, um, seeing how devoted everyone is to reclaiming our culture through our language learning is something that I'll take with me. I thought when I came to this class here in Guam, I thought it was going to be just the language. But I really find out, I mean, I really learned the culture of this island. I'm 81 years old right now, and I learned more with this two weeks that I was here than the whole time I was alive because uh, they really went deeper than what I've learned. I think what specifically challenged me most was the, um, I mean, obviously having people who talked really fast. Um, so still my, my listening comprehension and, and being able to uh, express myself emotionally on the spot. Uh, but I can honestly say that I've uh, progressed more in these two weeks uh, than six months of studying on my own. I feel like our practice sessions and our lessons were really challenging. We had every morning and every afternoon, we would open and end with a lesson. And then also our teacher, Maget, would have us each say like at least one sentence in Chamorro at the beginning and the end of our time. Also during our extracurricular activities and outside of class and when we would eat lunch together, we would be reminded by our teachers that we should still continue to only speak in Chamorro, which was pretty challenging. You know, there's also the challenge of going from a language you're comfortable in to a language that you don't know as well and like losing my fluidity. So there are so many times in the mornings when folks said to me like, how are you? And my answer was Malik, you know, Malika, I'm good, I'm okay, but like there was so much more I wanted to say and I just didn't have the language to do it. Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges was just gaining the confidence to, to use my voice in tomorrow. Um, I can be kind of a quiet person, so just putting myself out there, being okay, making mistakes, expressing myself in tomorrow was, was a challenge and something I haven't practiced before this program, but, but it was a challenge in the best way because it, it pushed me a lot. <laughs> um. Uh, every day has been challenging just to allow myself to make the mistakes I need to make to learn the language. I think that I've unknowingly been much more proficient reading and writing and haven't had to speak as much, but having the opportunity to speak every day um, has almost made me you know, a little panicky before each class, but then once we, once we get into it, it flows much easier. But I think that's the biggest challenge is just letting yourself make mistakes while you're trying to do it. Just being able to verbalize things very quickly is, is one of my difficulties that I struggle with. Um, so it's definitely been good practice for me um, being in a safe space with, with all of my, my friends and peers who are, who are on the similar journey with me. It was difficult. Everything I learned, I was thinking about like sentence structure and grammar and pronouns and conjugation. And then to have to like put it into application was difficult, but that was the best part of it. Like that is the best way to actually practice it. And so um, it was challenging, but both rewarding at the same time. Where I go from here is just to hopefully 
uh, continue kind of the, the catalyst that this program provided and this momentum and just continue to, to build my, my language skills. Having had the experience of observing children and talking to children at Chief Hero Academy and as a mom myself, I know that my responsibility is very clear now. My role as a Chamorro mother is to ensure that I plant the seed of pride in my children in the same way that Saina Guinifi and all of the staff um, at Chief Hero Academy are doing for those students there. And my road is going to be more difficult because of the physical distance between my children and and Guam, but I'm up for that challenge and, be, and visiting Chief Harao made that very clear for, to me. Uh, I keep talking to my family mostly, I think, and my wife. I mean, the primary reason for doing this was to support my wife and connect with her in this way. I guess we'll have like tomorrow Thursdays or something at home. In some ways the answer is, I don't know. So I came with my mom and we've been talking as much as possible, completely in Chamorro, even when we're not like in the hours of the program. And so I hope to continue that with her. I think I will continue to be a little bit more um, aggressive in my understanding and in my pursuit of getting a, a little bit more advanced in reading and writing in Chamorro. From here, this language journey continues on. Uh, this was a great program to help jumpstart my kind of confidence and just jump right back into learning tomorrow. So after this program wraps up, um, we just go back to where we were before, going on to the Zooms, checking with, in with folks online, keeping conversations going um, on WhatsApp, calling each other up and trying to play bingo over Zoom and things like that. Um, Part of it too, I think, will be really nice where moving forward, we have this extended network of tomorrows that we can lean on depending on where we are um, for maybe weddings or funerals or parties or whatever's happening. We have this larger network of tomorrows that we can lean on. So if I ever find myself in Colorado, if I find myself in Michigan, Washington State, or any of these folks find themselves in New Zealand, like we all have a bed, a couch, um, and a seat at the table for each other. Continuing on for me at least would be that I can, you know, me and my partner already speak tomorrow to each other on a daily basis. And so we have a daughter together. She's only eight months old, but we speak tomorrow to her as well. So I think just continuing on that path, you know, as a family speaking tomorrow and, and passing that down to our kids. That's, I mean, that has always been my goal is to just pass it down to our children. I'm excited to continue connecting with people on Zoom. I feel like I've made good connections and um, have kind of leveled up uh, in my just kind of conversational abilities. Um, I finally kind of feel like I'm ready to start talking with my family in Chamorro more. It takes courage to talk to your family in their native language. I think it'll be really beautiful once I'm able to do it, but um, I feel like I'm at that point and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to picking up the phone and calling my grandpa pretty soon. Where I go from here is I am committed to learning the Chamorro language. I will have my regular study groups and I will continue to learn. I will, I will try to be fluent. I will try to practice with people. I will try to push myself. I will try to be brave and I will try to speak with fluent speakers back in the states that I live around, such as my dad and his wife. I will push myself because I realize that that's the main way that one learns a language. I have never felt more connected to the Tomorrow language than I do now. Uh, and it's not only the language, but uh, I feel a deeper connection with my, my father, my Tomorrow community, the, the family that has been created from of this program. I mean, we're all just so close now. Uh, and then a deeper connection with my ancestors. Being here with a community of people dedicated to immersion has inspired me to push myself further in my everyday life. Back in the States, like when I'm at, back at home with my family in San Francisco, one of my personal challenges has been um, sort of peeling back the layers of fear and speaking to my own parents in Chamorro more often. They grew up speaking the language, but they came to the States, you know, um, in their late teens, early 20s. So um, w 
we didn't learn tomorrow from them, but really challenging myself to speak to them more in tomorrow and create create that connection with them because I know that there's so much knowledge that they can they can share with me that I haven't really had the confidence to access before this program. One of the things I've been really proud of over the last few weeks is that like one sentence beginning of the day, end of the day. I've, I've kind of been winging it. Um, and the fact that I can, with a minute or two notice, say like a statement that is intelligible, even if it's not all correct, about what's going on for me or like what I did, um, is like it feels so huge um, to be producing the language without having to sit down with two dictionaries and my notebook and the notes from last week um, to write one sentence. So the, the sign of the program talked a lot about the words, like the history and the meaning in a way that felt really powerful and connecting to yesterday when we were on the Goliati and the coach of the Goliati said that we were moving into, into the deep ocean. And he said a word and I was like, I know that word. That word was from like the, the pre-boot camp um, that we did with Cindy Maget. And it's not just like a picture with a word next to it. Like I have been to the deep ocean and seen like what that word means. It's like, it's more than a picture. It's a place and a feeling all at once. I feel more connected knowing that um, I do have a cohort I can lean on. But again, um, I feel connected in a way that I have resources at my, you know, at my fingertips. I have a grandma that I could call anytime. I have aunties and uncles that I could be in conversation with. And this connection is beyond the class. And it helps me see that the language lives in different places in my life. So trying to fill in the gap so that it doesn't just live in my kitchen when I'm talking with my grandma, but it also lives when I, I'm upset with my partner or that it's something that I can use to talk with my mom when we want to have a conversation in front of folks in the States, but we don't want them to know what we're talking about. Like making sure those gaps are filled in so that it doesn't just live in my notebook and it doesn't just live on Zoom but it's something that thrives in all the spaces of my life as any language does. And my hope is that we can do this program again and we can encourage others to really come back home and enforce the importance of learning our language so that we could pass it on to the future generations. I definitely do. Um, although part of this program was so many people came from the States and, and you really can immerse yourself anywhere to be learning, but there's a way in which when you come here to the island, you're gonna see things, you're gonna be around the culture, you're gonna be around people that, that you can't duplicate anywhere. So I feel more connected to the language and my culture from this work, and I will continue to do so and do my part to attempt to keep our language alive.